Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America and the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program today. As mentioned, our guest is Bill Welch, America's number one baseball strategist. He is the a pioneer in baseball stats. He founded Baseball Analysis and Reporting System. That's BARS. He scouted hundreds of major league games over the course of many years, gathered information on every major league player. He's the author of the book, The Tenth Man, how a major league baseball team can gain a two to three run advantage every game. Bill, welcome to This Week in America. It's great to have you with us on the program. Thank you, Rick. Glad to be with you. Well, it's a fascinating book, and for those people that think, I've got to learn more about Moneyball because that seems to seems to be the way everything is going, you're saying, wait a minute, not quite so fast. I can give you a whole lot more than Moneyball. And let, let's talk about this BARS system, and then we'll talk about how you actually developed this back in the late 1960s, early 1970s. That's right. What exactly is BARS? Explain that. I gave it very quickly, the baseball that's, analysis. That's just the name I gave it, baseball analysis and reporting system. That's what it is, just uh, getting the information put together. Well, and you've got a lot of information. Let's go back to those days. You're at the University of Arizona. Remember the baseball team? You're doing some charting, and you're really giving the coach a lot more information than he was after, but it was good information. Talk about how you developed the system, basically sitting there in the dugout watching a game in, in, unfold in front of you. Honestly, uh, I want to tell you, we had our 50th reunion. I went back to March 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Of course, Frank De- Sanson, our manager, has been dead for years, but it's 50th anniversary, and we had a lot of fun. And at, back in those days, we played a lot of inner squad games, and I was a utility type player, played everywhere and pitched quite a little bit too. And I just could see that our players hit the ball certain ways. Matter of fact, what really got me the idea is our best hitter, Maxwell, hit the ball between short and third all the time. Well, the opposing teams, they didn't know that's where he was going to hit the ball. And then we had another guy, Lance Long, that played first base. It was a left-hand hitter. He hit a lot of balls down the left field line. Well, they didn't know that because they hadn't scouted our team. So that's got me interested if people would scout our team, if we scouted other teams, uh, we would have players in the right position at all times. Well, and I understand when you were in the field sometimes, you were different, uh, positioned differently than the, the, the coach really wanted you, yet the ball came to you. So you be, oh, using yeah. this information, just, uh, you could position, position yourself. Myself, I could kind of tell what the players were going to do. I didn't set up for a uh, certain type of hitter and stay at the same position all the time. I pretty much knew what the pitcher was going to throw, fastball, curveball, and breaking ball, and I adjusted myself, but I was the only guy that did that. Well, let's break down because it all starts with the pitching charts that you do, and you take the plate, and you basically what divide this into like nine different quadrants. That's right. What I can do is I can predict with 70% accuracy, the type of pitch it's going to be thrown. Then I pitch with 65% accuracy the where the ball will be thrown, like high inside, low outside. I put a tit-tat-toe type chart there, like you see when you watch TV. They have tit-tat-toe charts where the ball is pitched, but you don't ever see anyone put a batting average in any of those tit-tat-toe charts because they don't have the information. But anyway, having 75% type of pitch, 65% the location, then I'm right at least 90% of the time at position, the player is exactly where the ball is going to go. And these situations change during an at-bat. So often we see someone coming to the plate, based on the situation, they, they position the fielders, and you are constantly repositioning the fielders uh, based on the situation. That is correct. Also, you want to position hitters hit completely differently when they're ahead of the count, when they're behind on the count, and even on the count. There are many hitters that actually hit Frank White that played for the Royals, yep. for example. As in the book, I gave an illustration. He hit better when behind on the pits and on the count and went ahead of the count. There's a few of those people that can do that because they're expecting maybe breaking ball pitches when they're behind, and uh, they can hit those type pitches. Or when you're ahead, they're probably uh, looking for fastballs when the pitcher's ahead. 
You're listening to This Week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Our guest on the program is Bill Welch, America's number one baseball strategist. The book is called The Tenth Man. It's available all across the country. We'll lead you to Amazon to find it. It's published by Red Dog Books, uh, their website, reddogbooks.com. Uh, of course, go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and you can link on, get direct information on Bill, on the bar system, as well as ordering the book. The book's been endorsed by people from George Brett, Wade Boggs, uh, Dave Winfield. It's like memory lane when you go down through the book because you've got this broken down so well. And I'm going to go back and pick up this story because uh, Kansas City Royals, way back in the infancy of, of the bar system, uh, they actually, you went, traveled with them some, and, and you were able to work with them. 1969 and 70, I went to Ewing Kaufman, the owner of the Royals, and he flew me in his private jet, he and his wife, and I went out there and scouted the, at that time we needed two scouts, and I was a scout, and then the uh, pitcher pitched the following day would be a scout, and went to Los Angeles and went to Oakland to start off the year, and we scouted them for three or four years and got information, but really they... We didn't get enough information, Rick, because I was just scouting the Royals against the other team, so to speak. And then when it got to be around uh, uh, 1980, then your dishes came out. And I said, my gosh, with all this dish situation, I can scout a lot of games since I did it on TV. You get all the Cubs games, for example, all the Atlanta games, for example, also, the Royals, so I was three games, I could get a lot of them, and then I'd get a lot of others, so I got up to where I could do 800 games a year with, say, four scouts. So I got that information and accumulated that and finally went back to Mr. Kaufman. And at that time, Dick Hauser was the manager, and they used my information in 1985 when they won the... Uh, World Series. Well, it's interesting because, as I understand, Hauser was sort of the deciding vote when you went back with the information. And keep in mind, uh, uh, you really refined this. You said the satellite dishes came along. You brought in a scout. Computers got bigger and better and faster, so you could put all of this raw data in there, and it came back with uh, with accuracy. One of the main reasons Hauser was saying, I got this Larry Parrish guy from the Rangers that's driving us nuts. We can't get the guy out. You were able, because of your statistics, to get Larry Perry shot, like you said, that year the uh, the Royals went on to win the World Series. That is right. See, I showed him that uh, you could pitch low outside. He was hitting low outside curveball as well. Well, no one hits low outside curveballs and sliders from a right-handed pitcher, and he is a right-handed hitter. I pointed out where he hit that along with change up with great regularity. And that was the swing and boat. He said, I didn't realize that. That's where we wanted to pitch him. But it turned out he was wrong, and he used my sister. I developed friendships with Lou Pinella, and he managed Cincinnati, and I went in 1990, and free of charge gave him the information. He won four playoff games and four uh, straight games in the World Series, so I helped him along a little bit, too. And Marge shot along the way, too. That was her year where uh, her year of glory, where she swept uh, everything and going on to win the uh, the World Series that year. The book is The 10th Man, uh, How to Win a Major League Baseball uh, Team Can Game an Advantage, 2-3 Run Advantage Every Game. The 10th Man, Bill Welch, America's number one baseball strategist, with us on the program. Uh, Davey Johnson helped you design the pitching charts. Let's talk a little bit about the chart because as, as you look at this, uh, I mean, this this basically every time a pitcher touches a rosin bag on the mound, literally, you've got that charted so the batter has some idea what's coming. Talk a little yeah, bit about bat- what all's in there. That should be better because uh, I can predict what people say. Is this a defensive situation? No, I said it's a 50-50 deal. Is it the hitter up there? I can predict 75% the type of pitch, 65% the location, so he can guess. And matter of fact, I can make a case out of instead of the fielders having speed where they can cover a lot of ground, you might put bigger players, slower players that are good hitters, put them out there because they don't have to cover near the ground because they know the 
position the hitters and the ball's going to come to them regularly. And then when they come to bat, even though they don't have the speed to play defense, they're a great offensive hitter, so it will help them offensively. Well, and you would think, and I'm thinking of Derek Jeter off the top of my head, here's someone that's saying we're going to eventually have to move him from shortstop because as he ages, he's losing a little bit of his range out there. He's losing a step or two. And you're saying with this knowledge where you've got sort of a, an idea ahead of time where this guy statistically is liable to hit the ball, this guy being the batter, but by repositioning, you, you don't worry about that step or two that you've lost. That's right. You've got to position yourself on every single pitch. You can't just go out there and set up on playing this guy a, a medium deep towards right center field. You've got to change. It's going to change. He may hit certain pitch in right center field. Same pitcher may hit the next pitch down the right field line. So it's a there can be a difference of 25 yards in between pitches, for example. Wow. The Where tenth, you should play. The 10th man is the book, Bill Welch, our guest on the program, America's number one baseball strategist. Uh, this is his, uh, developed this, uh, again, going back to the late 1960s, early 1970s. In fact, talk with Sports Illustrated in an interview back in 1972 about computers and sports. Did they look at you funny back then? Because everybody was sort of flying by the seats of their pants and, uh, and not really relying on computer-generated information. Still, uh... People, I'm funny. I mean, people still say it won't work, but it will work. Now, I tell you, in that 72, I saw this morning the guy that wrote the article. He is in the Kansas City paper for some reason shaking hands with someone, and his name was Frank Deford. Oh, of he course. He in the Kansas City paper this morning. Yes, one of the great sports writers of all time. That's right. And he had me in there and saying, I can't believe all this. This was in 72. He had another guy in there, too. I don't forget uh, who it was, but uh, Ewing Kaufman arranged the arrangements, and believe it or not, Ewing Kaufman really liked me, And uh, but a guy, John McMullen, that owned the Houston Astros, he took me on a golf trip to Pine Valley in Pine Valley, New Jersey, and uh, for a week, and he liked my system too, but really, the owner... If you're an owner, you got to tell your general manager, you have to tell the manager and so on, we're going to use this or we don't. But I can understand why when someone has a lot of baseball experience and they get a managerial job for the first time, they don't want to rely on a computer which they're unfamiliar with. They want to do it the way that they do their experience and so on. Yeah, and that makes sense. And so often now, you've only got a couple of years to turn around a franchise or to keep it winning or you're out of a job. So that does make sense. The uh, 10th man is the book. Bill Welch is our guest on the program. A couple minutes left in the show. It's going by uh, way too quickly here. Let's talk a little bit about what you would like to do for the fans. I know you would like to maybe do a a newspaper, maybe an application where people can actually take all of your information sit at home and watch a ball game and play along if they wanted to wager a, a time or two during the course of the ball game. You've got some information there as well. How are you coming in making this accessible for fans, which I know is a Here's goal of Here's what I want someone to do. Come in and look at this book and get an understanding. Buy the uh, copyright for me. Go out and get their own scouting system put together. Get all the information and get it like I have here, and then with modernization of people with their cellular telephones, iPods, and so on, put it on their iPods and cellular phone, and they can go to the baseball game and press it and say, here's the type of pitch, here's the location, here's exactly where the ball's going to go. They'd be way ahead of the managers and ball players. They know what's going to happen. And it's not hocus pocus as you're reading this and you're going through and you, again, taking some of the great names in baseball and you're able to predict and sure enough, uh, you know, it happens. And again, with the statistics you've got, the, uh, the high rate of probability that you're going to be accurate on this, it, it just is, is amazing. When you are talking to some of the people that you write about in the book, and I mentioned some of those, uh, George Brett, Wade Boggs, that type of person, what, what kind of reaction do you get from them when it's like, wow, I wish I would have had this information available to me back when uh, the height of my career? I didn't discuss much with it when I traveled. Really, I got this information, a lot of this information before George Brett got there, although I do have a lot of information on him. And Lou Pinnell, I discuss it with him. Like in the book, I says he wants to know 
he wants to know what the first pitch is going to be. Well, Lou Pinello, to my knowledge, and I saw him bat hundreds of times, I don't know if he ever hit a first pitch. <laughs> now, he may have swung at it and fouled it off and so on, but I've never seen a guy swing at first pitches or whatever, and nothing occurred. But you get two strikes on Lou Pinello, and he admits he guessed with two strikes, but when he guessed with two strikes, it was good because he was the greatest two-strike hitter I've ever seen. Well, and now instead of a guess, it's at least an educated guess. It just, uh, and again, statistically, uh, the odds are on your side. The book is an excellent read. It's called The Tenth Man. Bill Welch has been our guest on the program, America's number one baseball strategist. The Tenth Man, how a major league baseball team can gain a two to three run advantage every game. And boy, when you think about that, even the teams at the bottom, if they could uh, pick up uh, a run or two every game, suddenly they're, they're competitive. They're not trailing anymore. That's right. See, the average hits per game normally is around nine. You save two to three hits. That's a third of all the hits. And then if you save two to three hits, that's uh, uh, saving maybe two to three runs. It figures out about the same thing. But also, we're again talking about defense. If you're on offense and have this information, the type of pitch and location of the pitch, you can score more runs, too, because the other team – then set up defensively. Well, it's amazing what uh, technology can do and what numbers can do, and you were way ahead of the curve back in again. Another money. thing I'll say is you can take like a pitcher. I can point out to a pitcher, here is your sequence of pitches, fastball, high inside, curveball, medium outside, uh, changeup. I can get the sequence of pitches that this pitcher should use against this hitter. Or I can get the sequence of pitchers to where you can position your fielders, stay at the same location, and change the location and type of pitches to still go to the fielders without changing. It's absolutely amazing. You will love the book. It's called The Tenth Man. Bill Welch is the uh, the author, our guest on the program, America's number one baseball strategist. The Tenth Man. Information is available, of course, at Amazon. You can log on to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on to get information on Bill and the book. Bill, we'll check back from time to time. You've got a lot of exciting things going out there, and we'd love to get the uh, the home app at the Tenth Man so we can sit home and uh, and have some fun watching uh, watching baseball games, even take it to the park with us. Thank you for joining us on the program. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I enjoy it very much, Rick. You're Thanks. listening to This Week in America and the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network.